Stonecliff Productions presents a powerful methods production, Systems Thinking, a way to optimize everything that you do. What is systems thinking? Say you want to make a cup of coffee. You plug in your coffee maker, pour the water into the reservoir, scoop the coffee into the filter, and wait for it to brew. In this case, you deal only with inanimate objects. You can change the sequence or alter the amount of ingredients. This system is a deterministic system because we can determine the outcome knowing the processes. The boundaries of this system are those of your kitchen, which is a subsystem of your home, which is a subsystem of your city. As always, the system you are managing has multiple layers of context. This system is also called an open system, which has inputs and outputs. The input is converted to the output through a process. We can optimize this system by economizing resources that are scarce. If time is the scarce resource, your first action might be to plug in the coffee maker, because you notice that warming up the coffee maker takes longer than the other task. Project managers call these tasks critical path tasks. When economizing on time, these tasks are completed first. As the manager of the system, you optimize the process through experiment and experience. If you notice that you have to walk back and forth in the kitchen a lot to get the items you need, you may decide to arrange those items closer to where you are working. In this way, you have identified a barrier. If you notice that your coffee maker takes too long to warm up, you invest in a better one. In this way, you improve a tool. As the names apply, tools help the process go forward, barriers hold the process back. You design the system for maximum manageability and value. A more manageable system is one that requires less intervention to achieve the desired benefits. You also regulate the system by controlling every step. At each step, you observe the output and then adjust the process as required. This is called a feedback loop. There is another kind of control loop called feed forward, in which you monitor input variations and then adjust the process to compensate. System management involves regulating the input and process for the desired output. If the process changes, then tools, barriers, and regulating may also need to be changed, depending upon the desired benefit. Maybe the tools you have for making coffee are barriers for making tea, which is the desired drink of your husband or your wife. Then your daughter comes along and rearranges everything to make hot cocoa. So now you decide to buy a gourmet coffee maker, one that has the ability to make coffee, tea, and hot cocoa. This means having a tool for multiple uses, which are inherently compromised. A tool that functions both as a hammer and a screwdriver will neither be a good hammer nor a good screwdriver. In the case of the coffee maker, gourmet coffee makers are generally more expensive and limited to single cups. So what will it be? Separate tools for each duty or one tool to perform them all? Designing a system with one process is simple, but designing a system with multiple processes is an engineering challenge. Once an optimum design is found, you maintain that design for all future use. This means you are building a system structure, which is a stable parameter of the system. Because you are the beneficiary of that cup of coffee and you incur the cost, including ownership of the kitchen, you have the incentive to optimize the process for maximum value. In economics, this is called private property. This is different than communal property or public property, where individuals do not own their property and thus have no incentive to optimize their systems. In managing public property, such as roads, we come together as sovereign individuals to form a society and elect representatives to manage the systems on our behalf. You've also established infrastructure through purchasing decisions. Your cup of coffee is made possible through a number of different companies located throughout the globe. 
those companies profited whenever you purchased the coffee, and that allowed them to grow and expand. Consumers and producers choose the most profitable option. This is the basis of a free market economy. The key is choice. Choice is freedom. Now back to structure. Every system has structures, it's stable parameters. Your kitchen has stable parameters that allow you to make that cup of coffee. But at the same time, they impose limitations on the process. For example, the walls of your kitchen and the arrangement of your cabinets and counters, they're all fixed. And you don't change them because, well, the cost is too great. But we cannot make cups of coffee by the millions in your kitchen. The structures of the system limit its capacity. There is only so much you can do to increase capacity. Beyond that, the structure must be redesigned. There are three distinct levels of optimization. One, optimization within the structures, or system management. Two, optimization of the system structures, system design. Or three, optimization of the context structures, or global system design. Regulating the process of making the cup of coffee is system management. Rearranging or replacing the tools is system design. Integrating with fellow citizens for a common supply of water, electricity, and sewage is global system design. You can control some structures more than others, which guides us to focus more on factors that are significant and within our sphere of influence. Would you like to learn more? Visit our website at PowerfulMethods.com for innovative ideas on value creation, operational efficiencies, and competitive advantage. I hope during this discussion you enjoyed a cup of coffee. Oops, it's time to go to work.